Hi everyone, so my name is Youssef Hosni. I work at Consensus on GNAC, and I'm gonna try to sell you GNAC. Well, uh, actually, I'm gonna talk about some of the algorithmic optimizations we have in GNAC that makes it fast. So we are a team of uh, five so far, and we are building uh, two libraries in Go. So one is called GNAC, which is a uh, easy to use open source library for SNARKs, and the other one is GNAC Crypto, which is a cryptographic library in Go. So uh, GNARC under the hood is basically composed of these components. So you have a front end when you write your circuits, a back end for power generation and power verification. And then underneath you have this GNARC crypto library, which is pairing based cryptography and elliptic uh, curve based cryptography and a finite field uh, arithmetic library. So we have all the stack written in Go, no dependencies. So uh, in the back end we have so far Go 16 and Plonk with two polynomial commitments, so KZG and uh, Phi. Uh, we have in the front end um, a standard library with uh, MIMC, ECDSA, EDDSA, banks in circuits, BLS in circuits. And we have uh, both APIs for na a native field and non native field arithmetic. And in uh, GNAC Rito, we have a bunch of elliptic curves BN, BLS 12, BLS 24, uh, two chains with BLS 12 or 24, twisted Edwards. Uh, we have fast multi-scalar multiplication, fast pairings, KZG, PHI, PLUCAPS, and we have already um, recently implemented SAMCHECK protocol, GKR. And in the finite field arithmetic, we have different sizes ranging from 768 to 256 to cold deluxe as well. And it performs very, very well on different targets. Um, so the usual uh, workflow of SNARKs, so the same in GNARK. So we have a circuit that we write in plain Go, so it's not in a, a DSL. And then we compile it to uh, some constraint system, and then you call setup, prove, and verify API. So it is fairly easy to change the elliptic curve you want to use and the constraint system you want. So we just change, for example, here, BN254 by BLS12, and... Um, uh, L1CS, which is GOS 16 by SCS, which stands for Sparse Constraint System, which is Plonk. Uh, so we have a playground uh, where you can play with it in the browser with GOS 16 and Plonk you, to see how you can write your circuit in Go. Um, and then you can download the, the constraints and look, like, uh, look at what they look like, both in GOS 16 and SNOC. Um, so why GNARK? So we have no DSL. Uh, playing Go, so no dependencies at all. We compile large circuits in uh, a few seconds. Uh, so when you write your circuits in playing Go, you can use Go toolings, standard Go toolings to debug, test, benchmark your circuit. But also we've developed a cool, cool thing which we call constraints profiler. So by just adding two lines of code, you can have this, key, this, this figure here where you see in each function how many constraints does it consume. Um, yeah, and uh, several packages are, are already audited by Algorand and fast tested by Geth for one year, I guess now. And uh, there is one code base that performs well in different architectures, CPU, mobile, WASM. So in the mobile, we are 70% faster than the baseline in the Z price. Um, so the question is why GNARK is that fast? So here I give an example of course 16 SNARK prover on BN254 curve. So this means MSM's computations, FFT computations, and parallelism. So I took the examples of uh, two of the most used libraries. So uh, Arcworks in Rust and Sericom with uh, Rapid Snark backend in C++. So two kind of uh, circuit sizes. So one is uh, 65K, the other one is 8 million constraints. Uh, so this is a AWS AMD machine, and we see that GNARK performs very well for both kinds of circuits. So there are some libraries that are heavily optimized for large circuits, for instance. Uh, GNARK is optimized for both. Uh, so this is for the prover side. Uh, for the verifier side, which is GOS 16 SNARK verifier, so which is mainly pairing computation over BN 254. So again, we see that on the same machine, um, uh, GNARK is very fast, so it's uh, uh, a bit more than one milliseconds on this machine to verify to to compute uh, to verify a proof, which is mainly uh, a multi exp and uh, a pairing computation. Um, yeah, so it's a PDF. 
it was interactive, but anyway. Uh, so um, the question is why GNOC is that fast? Uh, so remember this diagram from the very beginning? So we have a front end, back end, and GNOC crypto underneath. And the question is, so I will go through some of the algorithms that are highly optimized in GNOC. So we start by writing a circuit, C. We generate the proof pi of C. Uh, which means that we will call GNAC Ritu to compute FFTs and mostly MSMs over, so yeah. So I'm giving the example of a recursive GOS 16 proof and just to concentrate over the algorithmic optimizations, I'm using a 2J, so there is no wrong field arithmetic. But it works also with wrong field arithmetic. Um, so it calls uh, an MSM over BLS 377 and then we uh, write a circuit C prime of the proof pi. We generate the proof pi prime of this circuit C prime, so the aggregation, uh, which means that we will call GNAC uh, to, uh, to, to compute a uh, multi-scalar multiplication over the BW6761 curve, which is the outer curve. And um, we verify the proof, step five, which means that we will call GNAC to, to compute the pairing. So I will be talking about the optimizations in uh, those points that are, in that are in boxes. So mainly MSMs and pairings and writing circuits. Um, so MSMs over BLS 2F377. So I, uh, this is a graph from the ZPrice uh, submission. Uh, so I'm comparing it to ArcWorks because it implements BLS 2F377. Uh, so we are 40 up to 47 percent faster uh, for, a, for a range of for a points ranging from 2 to the 8 to 2 to the 18. Uh, so this is tested on mobile, so on a Samsung Galaxy. Uh, and we have two, so here I have two versions of GNAC, one using twisted Edwards curves and the other one is using short wire Strass curve. So the one is 40 to 47 and the other one is 20 to 35 percent faster. And the question is why? So, um, so both uh, implementations do not use pre computations but use parallelisms, but in a different way. I'm not going to talk about this. So we use two NAF buckets, uh, which reduces the size of the bucket by twice. This is not using ArcWorks. But most importantly here is the curve form and the coordinate system. So we prove that any inner curve can be written in a twisted Edwards curve with A equal to minus one. And uh, we uh, extended a coordinate system, so, a co a, so we call it custom XYT, in order to make computations faster. So why is that? So, um, so I call a B bit MSM is an MSM of size N with scalars of B bit. Uh, so general, so all the libraries implement this variant of Pippinger, which is bucket list method. So it goes in three steps. So it uses the B bit MSM into C bit MSM for some fixed for some fixed C. Uh, we solve each C bit MSM efficiently, and then we combine the C bit MSM into the final B bit MSM. So the overall cost is this one. So minus one in, in blue is when you use this. Uh, enough encoding of the scalars. Otherwise, so you have two to the C. Um, but this overall cost can be uh, explicitly uh, uh, broken into what I call mixed re-additions, additions, and um, additions and doublings. So, um, so for large MSMs, so what is most important is the mixed re-additions because they scale with the number of points n. The others are constant. So if you look at all the shapes of the elliptic curves and all the coordinate systems that are over there, so you can look at EFD uh, webpage. Um, so twisted Edwards with A equal to minus one with extended coordinate system have seven multiplication for dedicated addition uh, compared to, for example, 11 in ArcWorks with Jacobian coordinates. Um, so what we did is basically, when, when I say re-addition is, uh, so those points are re-added uh, in the buckets, so they are the same. So when you look at this unified addition, so which means that we will not have any branch, any else branches to, to, to handle uh, exception case. Uh, so it is one multiplication plus, but the multiplication is a multiplication by a constant, which is two to the D. So we come up with a custom coordinate system, which is instead of having the tuple X and Y, you have Y minus X, Y plus X, and two times D times X times, times Y. So you can do uh, unified additions without branching at the same cost of the, uh, of the dedicated addition to seven multiplication. Um, yeah, and this is basically one of the, the, the optimizations that makes MSM faster in GNARC. Um, the second box was writing the circuit C prime of the verification of pi. So in the previous presentations, we've talked about pairing check inside a circuit and how much it is expensive, right? So um, 
there is a long line of research of pairing computation outside of the circuit, and we can do computations of BLS, uh, a pairing of BLS-12377 outside of circuit in less than one millisecond. But if you port mutatis mutandis, those optimizations, inside of a circuit, the number of constraints is roughly 80,000 in RLCS. So we were able to reduce it to eight, uh, so 11.5. Uh, constraint. So there are a few um, implementations so far. So there is one in ArcWorks, one in Lipsnox, and I believe one a new one in uh, the ZK pairing by Zero X Park. Um, in ArcWorks, which was the state of the art for this computation, it was 19,000 constraints, but we uh, were able to reduce it to 11.5. So the the paper is here. Uh, you can check it. Uh, but the main ideas are basically. Um, so the inverse is not costly in NIRCS, so you can do double and add in a fine. So not double and add, but double and add. And uh, we have a different representation of the line, so that we have sparse multiplications by the line in NIRCS wise. Um, we use torus based arithmetic inside of the circuit. So it uses inverses, that's why it wasn't used uh, outside of the circuit, but in, inside of the circuit it makes sense. And the final exponentiation is also using Calabina cyclotomic squaring instead, instead of Granger Scott, which is not used outside of the circuit. And for both the Miller loop and the final exponentiation, we use short addition chains. But the trick here is that normally in a short addition chain for, of double and add, you would like to have to optimize the, 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 the doublings because doublings are faster than additions. But constraint-wise, it's the opposite. Uh, it, a doubling costs more constraint than addition because the line slope is, has a square, so it costs two constraints instead of one, just which is division. So the idea is gross sexing is only in 19K uh, uh, constraints. BLS signature is 14.8 constraint, case constraint, and KCG verifier is just uh, 20,000 uh, constraints. Um, the last box. So pairings over BW6761. Um, so we can compute this on a Intel machine here in 1.22 milliseconds compared to 1.71 uh, uh, milliseconds. And the question is why? So actually we do not implement the same formula. So um, a pairing is, so of P and Q is this M of P and Q, which is what we call the Miller loop. So it is a loop and uh, a final exponentiation, which is the exponentiation by q to the six minus one out of r. So uh, the optimization comes from the Miller loop. So uh, the original paper of BW6761 has this formula for computing the plane, which is f of u plus, uh, plus one and f of u, q minus u uh, square minus u. So which are two Miller loops of size u plus one and u, q minus u square minus u. So when you see uh, those, uh, so they have bit size 64 and 190, and the Hamming weight in two and a half is seven and 31. So what we did in GNARK is that we observed that U minus one square, the Hamming weight of it in two and a half is just 12 compared to 31. And we rearranged the equation so that we uh, have this second equation. And basically you have two Miller loops still, but the second Miller loop, uh, this one, is using the result of this one. And it's not starting at one as, is, as in these two. And this is just a line computation, and this point is already computed in this Miller loop. So you have really just two Miller loops, as in here, but with uh, size, uh, with the loop size way smaller. Uh, the exponentiation by Q, uh, by Q are, are, are cheap because these are just for news. So we have also a paper about this. It is on ePrint. You can check it out. And we have a HackMD here blog where it explains. Uh, the changes between these two and other algorithms. Because this one is just for one pairing, and for multi pairings, we have other algorithms. So, a novel algorithm that we call Twisted Tate Edwards, because in this kind of uh, elliptic curves, BW6, G1 and G2 are on the same field. So, you can use Tate instead of 8, and you can use the endomorphism there. And for multi pairings, it was way faster than, than what we had previously. So, um, this is just a couple of optimizations that I talked about in, in GNARK. So, it is really optimized in all the stack. Um, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us on, by email or on Twitter. There are some useful links here, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Oh. Hi, good talk, thank you. I want to know 
why did you choose uh, Go instead of Rust, for example? Uh, good question. So um, this work was started before I joined, <laughs> so it was already in Go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, uh, so I, we think that Go is still also fast, but also because there are many uh, libraries and projects out, uh, over there that are using Rust, and there are many blockchains that are using Go. So it was nice to have the Snark library written in Go so that we can have native uh, integration with them. You mentioned you guys had support for look, lookups in GNARK. Is uh, that already released or? Yeah, so it is in GNARK Kato, plookups. But we do not have Plonk with plookups. We have, we have just the plookup argument in, in GNARK Kato that we will use for the ZK EVM. Uh, so I guess, so you're saying you can use plookup, but how do you use it without the Plonk integration? So we do not have the integration so far, but we have just the plookup arguments. Okay, got it. Uh, 